You're on in five minutes. championship amid all that jazz on one team a coach's son pursuing a lifelong dream on the other team a dominating center who's carried his team to new heights One man is a coaching legend who's won two national titles. The other is hoping to win his first. Tonight from the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans, this is the NCAA Basketball Championship. reaches its climax. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Nance. Welcome to CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Championship. You know, there are 290 Division I men's basketball programs across the country. 64 of those squads were selected to take part in this three-week tournament. And tonight, only two remain, Syracuse and Indiana. And in just a few moments, they'll vie for the most coveted award in college basketball, the NCAA Championship Trophy. Now, to help set the stage for tonight's title game, let's go to my colleague, James Brown. All right, Jim, thank you very much. You know, first-year players could play a significant role in the outcome of tonight's game. Joby Wright, the assistant coach at Indiana, said that while most people are focusing on Steve Alford, that Dean Garrett, in his first year of major college ball, his efforts will be crucial. He's had good games against quality centers, and Ronnie Cycle, he certainly is a quality center. Freshman Derek Coleman of Syracuse, on the other hand, has had an outstanding NCAA tournament. He told me he feels very confident he could continue his strong rebounding and scoring. And when you think, it was just last year that a first-year player, Purvis Ellison, led his team to the NCAA title and the MVP trophy. Will history repeat itself? We'll find out as the game unfolds. Jim? All right, thank you, James. And who can forget that it was a freshman by the name of Michael Jordan who hit the game-winning shot for North Carolina in this very arena five years ago. Right now, it's time to introduce the two gentlemen who will be calling the action from midcourt, Brent Musburger and Billy Packer. Thank you very much, Jim Nance, and good evening, everybody. You know we have two schools with rich basketball traditions here, Indiana and Syracuse. It's somewhat hard to believe they have never played each other in the sport. Now, we also have a coaching story unfolding here tonight. Bob Knight, the head coach of the Hoosiers, trying to win his third championship. He has never lost in a title game. On the other side, Jim Beheim. He is trying to win for Syracuse their first championship ever as a school. He is a four-point underdog. Neil Billy Packer, one of the great individual matchups that we have to talk about. Some great guard play coming everybody's way tonight. Well, Brent, you can't get to this point in the tournament without great guard play. Both teams have it, and particularly in two individuals. Steve Alford from Indiana, a guy who's extremely patient. He's a senior. He's a great outside shooter, constantly moves without the ball. On the other side, you have the impatient athlete, a super athlete in Sherman Douglas. He has the ball in his hands all the time. He's a street fighter, a great athlete. He'll probably go right out they're all for defensively. Well, Billy, we need to find out something about the strategy that these two coaches are going to employ, and here's what they had to say to us. 
Defensively, we've got to do a, a job of being aware of where Alfred is. Try to limit him. You can't let him go off and get 30. If he does, uh, it's, that's a killer. They get the ball down quickly. They get it into position to shoot it and rebound it. Um, their inside game is very tough, and they've got good penetration to set that up. We have to do a good job inside on the boards. That's a, an area that we have a strength in right now. I think foul trouble uh, either way is a key. I think that uh, our ability to get the ball into offensive operating areas for our scorers is important. We're not going to get the opportunity of the fast break basket against Indiana. We're going to have to execute in the half court game, uh, which we've done well this year, but is not our strong point. And Billy, how would you break it down? Well, I think there are going to be a couple of keys to this ball game tonight. The first thing is the matchup dilemma Syracuse had. Who do they put on Steve Offord when they go man-to-man? -man? I think they'll start with a little zone, but when they go man-to-man, -man, is it going to be Douglas that chases the man? That's going to be extremely important. On the other hand, I think Syracuse has an edge inside. They have superior people in regard to physical quality in Cycli and Coleman. That's going to be a tough matchup for Bobby Knight. And the third thing, a big advantage for Indiana. Both teams go to the foul line a lot, but Indiana has great superiority from that line. All right, Billy, we're about to crown another champion here in the Louisiana Superdome. We'll bring down the curtain not another great college season. CBS Sports presents NCAA Basketball. Tonight's National Championship game is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America Today Chevrolet. Mass Mutual. We insure more than lives. We insure success. And by Budweiser. Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. From the Superdome, New Orleans, Louisiana, Indiana and Syracuse for the title. Let's meet the starting lineups. Here's the PA announcer, Frank Fallon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Louisiana Superdome for this evening's national championship game between the Syracuse University Orange Men and the Indiana University Hoosiers. Now, let's meet the starting lineup. For Syracuse at forward, a 6'9 freshman from Detroit, Michigan, number 44, Derek Coleman. For Indiana at forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 20, Rick Calloway. For Syracuse at forward, a 6'5 senior from Syracuse, New York, number 25, Howard Trish. For Indiana at forward, a 6'7 senior from Westchester, Illinois, number 24, Daryl Thomas. For Syracuse at center, a 6'10 junior from Athens, Greece, number four, Ronnie Sykley. For Indiana at center, a 6'10 junior from San Clemente, California, number 22, Dean Garrett. For Syracuse at guard, a six-foot sophomore from Washington, D.C., number 20, Sherman Douglas. For Indiana at guard, a 6'2 senior from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. For Syracuse at guard, a 6'3 senior from Rochester, New York, number 11, Greg Monroe. For Indiana at guard, a 6'1 junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, number 23, Keith Smart. And now, introducing the head coaches. For Syracuse in his 11th season, Jim Beheim. For Indiana in his 16th season, Bob Knight. So it's coming up, Indiana and Syracuse for the national championship. Final four traveled by Syracuse. They eliminated those five teams. Providence they beat Saturday afternoon in one of the semifinals. For Indiana, they came to the Midwest region. They were top seeded there and they beat UNLV in a dandy 97 to 93. The referee who will toss up the ball to start the game between Syracuse and Indiana, Joe Forte of Smyrna, Georgia. He'll work with Nolan Fine, Virginia Beach, and Jody Sylvester of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Syracuse controls the tap. Howard Trish is 25. 
and Smart picks up Douglas. That means Alford has Monroe in the Indiana man-to-man. -man. They bring Monroe through a screen and make Alford cover the other side. Trent, you can believe that Syracuse is going to make Alford work tonight on defense. They can't let him rest like he did against Wade from UNLV. Thomas is taking Coleman's cycle. He lost it. Game's first turnover. And here comes Alford. Now we set some of the defenses on this side. Smart will bring it back out, and Syracuse falls back to the zone to open the game. Right, they're 2-3 zone. They've got to be aware of Alford at all times. Smart is hit by Douglas and fouled. Brett, one of the things Keith Smart does as well as anybody in the country against any kind of zone is he's got such great leaping ability. He'll penetrate right in between the gaps and then just go in the air because he did not fear the big men waiting on him. There's a story here in the dome in Louisiana. As Smart sets up to shoot this free throw, he will be seeing himself on a huge board in the background where they replay the game as it's unfolding. Now, I notice that Smart is not paying a bit of attention. All a good shooter does is lock into a spot on that rim or right over that rim. Smart is a good enough athlete to stay with Douglas. That's going to be quite a battle. Galloway taking Trish. Garrett is on cycle eight. And Coleman, the freshman, comes up over Thomas. That could be a bit of a problem for Daryl Thomas of Indiana as Coleman ties it with the game's first field goal. Don't tell me we're going to have another freshman MVP. It was just like Fervis Ellison last year. Those guys have ice water in their veins. Alford's first shot's a three. Didn't get the roll in Syracuse. It is Coleman with his first rebound. A field goal and a rebound early. Trish, a great role player, rattles out, but cycling. And he is fouled by Garrett underneath. Good positioning by Ronnie Cycli inside, and as we said at the top, the one advantage Syracuse has, and they'll try to take advantage of early, is the power play of Cycli and Coleman inside. But for Coach Beheim against Knight, write it down that Cycli did not hit the field goal underneath. He did not jam the ball in. He has lost the ball once on a turnover. They need to break Cycli strong in this game. Likely the one that's really most affected by the free throw uh, problem that you talked about hits the first one. One of two, Syracuse up by a point. Just underway in the Louisiana Superdome. Trish taking Alford on this side of the zone, and now he goes with it. Box and one to start off with right here. Interesting. Loose, Thomas. Comes three up seconds. With it. Three seconds. Beheim complaining about no call. The three second three call. Second. Couldn't hear it. I couldn't anyway, Billy, but you called it right. Good job by the official. And what happened? Thomas just couldn't pick up the handle and he was in there too long. Grant, I'm pretty sure that we saw Syracuse do something that really surprised me early. They went Trish going man to man. The other fellow's in a box. A box and one on uh, Alford early. Indiana has seen boxing one, more of a trick defense all year. Now Trish rattles one out. Garrett runs it down for the Hoosiers. Subtle defensive move by Bobby Knight. He's going to give Trish the outside shot. Knight always takes away something from your offense. Inside to Thomas. They didn't close him down, and he shoots the layup. Now Douglas brings it out. Smart takes him. Solid screen by Cycli. See, they're giving Trish the jumper. Nice drive. Off the drive. And Callaway rebounding for Indiana. Notice Indiana pushing it up floor against Syracuse. Callaway missing. <laughs> jammed up over the top by Garrett. I think Strong. That shocks Syracuse that Indiana's pushing the ball up the floor. Monroe's three, not there. Cycli and Callaway go up. And Ronnie Cycli's first personal foul. Fred, this really surprises me because Indiana just moved the ball up quickly, looking to take the shot. Now, look at Garrett's great inside position. Nothing you can do about that. Cycli almost picked up the foul. Syracuse goes straight man to man now. Cycli on Garrett. Thomas and Cycli was there defensively. Coleman is out, and now Douglas on the move. Three on two, and Trish. They finish 
off the break as well as anybody in basketball. The Hoosiers come right back at him. Here comes Smart negotiating. Pulls up on cycling. Holman rebounding again. Now it's Douglas. In a foot race early. Lob one of the alley oop. Callaway, great athletic play. Ball is out of bounds. Now check Callaway's leg. Those of you who have followed the Hoosiers know that he injured that knee early on. But notice that high on that leg, he has more protective padding than he has at any time in this tournament. Showed a lot of courage getting up off the floor in the LSU game. He's really backing off Trish's jump shot. Cycling on the turnaround, and Garrett stuffed him. Alford gets it away as Cycling couldn't grab the handle. Inside to Thomas on the turnaround, goaltending on Cycling. If I were Syracuse, I'd be a little shocked at the pace of this game because you had to assume Indiana was going to walk it a little more than this. Good strategy by Bobby Knight early on. Knight did not slow it that much against UNLV. They have played some high-scoring games in this tournament. Eight five, they lead. Cycling. He one and not done. Start quickly, Billy. Right, one and done, and every time uh, there's Thomas wide open, bat pass. Now back they come. Here's Monroe inside of Callaway. A chance for a three-pointer. Chance for a three-point play by Greg Monroe, the number two guard of the Orange Men, as Callaway came back with him and committed the personal. Steve Offer just said to Thomas, my fault on that other play. Yeah, Thomas wide open. There's Monroe finishing off that break. That's a four-point, maybe a five-point turnaround because Indiana had an easy basket on the other end. Ronnie Cycli sits down for the first time, and Jim Beheim will give him some instructions. The assistant coach with a mustache. Off to Cycli's left is Bernie Fine. That's his guru, if you will. So Derek Brower checks in early in this game for some moments, and so too does Stephen Thompson. As Trish sits down, we expected to see Thompson play some against Alford. The Hoosiers come down. They're up by a point. We've got 15-45 first half. Alford off the fake, penetrates. It won't stay down for him, so he's cold at the start. Switch that time by Smart. Now Alford is stuck over with Douglas. Well, Douglas may try to take him early on. This is Thompson, the freshman from Los Angeles. Coleman, the freshman from Detroit. And underneath there was contact. Brower's first personal. Probably not the shot Jimmy Beheim wants from Coleman early. He'd like to see him down inside a little more than that. Both. Here Jimmy Beheim goes to his bench again. I'm with Monroe going down. Howard Trish returns from the Syracuse left. 15-11. First half. Cycli up in the background, so he'll be returning as Howard Trish is already back in the game. Smart. Holman rebounds. Another rebound. That's five for the freshman. Douglas. That's a two. He was inside the line. Two for Douglas. Fred, that shot, that last shot by Key Smart is not the shot that Bob Knight would want him to take. Neither team really into the type of offense I, that I anticipated early on. Here you see Indiana starting to move. Trish covering up on Callaway. It was offensive foul. That is two personal fouls on Callaway. Bob Knight can ill afford to have him in early foul trouble. That's Knight's concern right now. He lost Thomas early against UNLV. Now it's two on Callaway. We'll be back. It's a TV timeout. Budweiser helps make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen. After holding out, Billy Packer will show us how Steve Alford gets open. The toughest defensive assignment for Syracuse tonight is to stop Steve Alford in motion. He'll hit a wingman, then he'll cut on the inside, looking to rub his man off the post players. If he rubs him off, he can move to the outside for his jump shot. If he's not successful in this attempt and the defensive man follows him, he can cut inside to get an easy play on the inside. Syracuse possession. All of the Syracuse starters have scored. Every starter in this game tonight and averaging double figures. So both teams rely on their starting lineup. Off a weave, Stephen Thompson getting inside. Cycling has the ball block. knocked away. Oh, great block that time because Cycling had a dunk. And Brent, you know, as you said, Syracuse wants to get him off the board early. And there's Steve Isle checking in for Coach Bob Knight. Played a great game on Saturday against UNLV. As a matter of fact, 
he may have been the key man in that ball game. Multi-talented, plays multiple positions. Indiana features defense, they always have under night, but the Syracuse defense is underrated. And that shooting percentage by both teams reflects some of the tough D that you'll see unfold here tonight. Good ball fake. Brower off the dribble. You talk about guys coming off the bench in championship events. Brower and Thompson have been doing it for Syracuse. Isle has been doing it for Indiana, and that's what you need to be a national champ. Indiana trying to stop a six-point run here by Syracuse. Thomas does that. Cycli that time pulled his hand back instead of drawing that opportunity to have another goal ten. He should be positioning himself for rebound. Double teaming on Cycli inside, giving Brower the... Turn it over, and the Hoosiers, who are unbeaten in those white jerseys, they're 22-0, bring it down. A chance to go ahead. Thomas off the dribble, drew the foul to charging his first. And there's Brower again, another heads-up play. He doesn't have a lot of quickness, but he's at the right place at the right time. Monroe and Coleman return for Beheim. Douglas sits down for the first time, and Brower is out. Jimmy Beheim really going to that bench, Brent. He's uh, realizing this, this game is going to be a struggle for a long time. He knows that uh, the Indiana bench is not deep. He wants to keep people fresh. Stevie Thompson likes to get inside with Alfred on him, but he's out here having to handle the ball. commits the offensive foul. That's his first. We've had three offensive fouls called already by this officiating crew. Now, great movement with the feet on the part of that time, Key Smart. Monroe finds himself in a very bad position. He does not like to handle the ball. He's the guy that likes to work off Douglas. Now watch the feet by Smart. Not checking at all with the hands. Does a little fake right there, but gets away with it. 12-39 mark. Four team fouls on both teams. Once they reach seven, they'll be in the one-on-one -on -one the rest of the way. Jared. The J.C. transfer scores his second field goal. There's the Indiana man-to-man. Man -to -man. Monroe's three. And Coleman underneath drew the foul. It's on Garrett, his second. Smart play by Coleman. He saw that Garrett had good position to block it, so he double-clutched up as he went up, drew the foul. Sherman Douglas back in the game for Bayheim. Billy, do you see any early trends you commented? Let me follow up on it. You said you were surprised by the two offenses. Maybe you would give us a little more on that. Well, I was surprised that Indiana tried to force tempo, bringing the ball up there quickly. They'll take advantage of the break when they have it, but they're a team that doesn't force tempo the way we've seen the last two days. Here comes the press. Indiana tough to press. Pretty smart club. Alford almost drew the foul, and now he comes up. There's contact, and cycle has got the loose ball in the turnover, but Isle gets it back. And Douglas dives for it. It's back in Indiana's possession. Alford's alone, so the scramble defense doesn't work. Cycle couldn't get the handle on the ball, and Alford makes him pay with the three. Well, one of the reasons that they're tough to press is Alford normally won't have the ball handling role. I think Indiana got caught by surprise there. He'll go down and be in position to be the receiver. Douglas answers with a three. Smart ups, upset with himself. He thought he could be out there on him. Garrett off the fake. And he shot an air ball completely over Cycli and the hoop and everything. Coleman is so cool. Swish, who has not shot well, misses again in smart rebounds. He can get a big advantage here. Offers three. He knocks down two quick ones. Well, there's the difference on the break. You notice that Steve Offer normally would fill the lane and go to the hoop. Now with a three-point shot, he held up in three-point range. Great play by Smart to see him and hit backwards. Folks, we got a dandy Bruin here. Great play by Thomas defensively to switch. 
Monroe stepped out of bounds, did he? Or was he fouled? Stepped out. You bet. That's their fifth turnover. Jimmy Beheim may be seeing that Stevie Thompson's athletic ability matches up best with Alford. He's getting him in here early in this uh, first half. Thompson, a great jumper. Plays taller than he is. Alford was open momentarily. You could see as he's bringing Thompson. And now Coleman steps into the passing lane. Great anticipation by the freshman. He and Isle collide. The foul is on number 32, Steve Isle. And there's a case where Coleman may be just a little bit too talented for his own good. If he'd have hit that ball back to the middle, he could have been a recipient of a three-on-one break. But he's got that ability to handle the ball in the open court. So he kept it a little bit too long, picked up the foul, which was of no advantage to Syracuse. This is unusual for Indiana to have more team fouls than the other team. Stikely got it right into his hands Push and off. hit the layup. Pushed Garrett to the floor and got away with it. It is strange to see Indiana in early foul trouble. Thomas Strong oh, and block. Cycli was there with a block. And here is Douglas. He looked for the alley-oop but wasn't there. Trish off the dribble forces one. And it goes to Indiana. Watch this block. Good job inside. Z. Coleman gave Thomas all he could handle, but when you turn on this ball club, they have a double dip there. Coleman blocks for Cycli. Cycli blocks for Coleman. And Cycli committed his second personal on that play. The ball was not simply out of bounds. They called the foul on Cycli. Now there are five team fouls on Syracuse. That's two fouls on Ronnie Cycli. Offer gets it back and missed again. And Coleman is fouled from behind. That's the first on Alford. What we see Stevie Thompson doing a little bit to Steve Alford, and he's very quick, and we know what a super leaper he is, and he's making Alford change his shot a little bit. They're over the limit. So Syracuse coming up to shoot one-on-one -on -one against Knight. Now, he has enjoyed a tremendous free throw advantage throughout this tournament. Indiana has hit 144 free throws, and the opponent's only 80. Statistically, it's a big difference coming into this game. Trent on the year, 185 more than their opponent. Must shoot the free throws in a championship game. It becomes so critical late. Garrett. Cycli out high. Thomas bodying Coleman. In trouble. Douglas shoots it too. Good job by Thompson not to go ahead and panic. He's double teamed on the inside. T Smart left his man. Knight gives a few words of leadership advice to Smart on what he wants done. Thomas, now he comes up. And again, Coleman goes so strong to the glass, doesn't he? At and that young man's only a freshman. Knocked away by Isle with a quick hand move. At 14 rebounds against North Carolina's powerful front line. And he's grabbing those with two hands, Brent. A real key to great rebounding. Billy, nine rebounds already for Derek Coleman in this game. They left him alone. Didn't want to take it. cycling has got position on Garrett. They're not giving him the ball. Douglas penetrates and gets it to Cycli. That was not a shot. That was a pass lob. Sherman Douglas and Cycli have that down to a science. They work it so well off eye contact. If the fans will just watch Thompson and Offer, they'll see one of the great battles without the ball that you'll see in college basketball. The lead has changed hands nine times already. Garrett couldn't get it. Thomas with an offensive rebound and a chance to put it in. He misses. Now, the Orangemen come out. Have Trish. He wanted it. Trish and oh. the other side gets it. That was not intended for Ronnie Cycli. That pass was for Trish. It was blocked, and Cycli had the presence of mind to pick it off. Bobby Knight may have created 
a style here that's not suited for his ball club by pushing it up four so quickly. Good ball switch ball. by Coleman. Got it into Thomas with a great pass. He just couldn't come up quickly enough on it, but he did draw the foul. What a fine snap pass by Steve Alford. And we've got a timeout here at 7.13. We'll be right back. Billy, it was a great play by Steve Isle. Well, it was a great play by Steve Isle, and it was not the classic fast break, although it was a three-on-one situation. Now, watch Isle go up. The pass was intended for Trish on his side. Isle blocks it, but look at Cycli. He picks up the flight of the ball in a hurry and goes in for the dunk. Give an assist to Isle. Not officially, but give him an assist on the play. Indiana's ball out of bounds. They trail it by four points here in the first half. Now make it two as Thomas comes around. Greg Monroe checked back in during that TV timeout. So there's seven minutes to go here in the first half. Nice defense by Smart. Douglas is quick. He couldn't get by him. Trish turns around on aisle and then comes back in over his back and commits his first foul. Howard Trish is shooting only one of seven in this game so he's been unable to contribute much to the offense here or they would have built up a much larger lead in the early moments of this game I think that subtly is the guy that Bob Knight is saying let's let him shoot and see if he can score against us now it's Trish on offer playing the two three zone again Syracuse really changing defenses around by using Thomas as a shooter against this defense. They've tried to bring Coleman into some foul situations that they've been unable to so far. Fred, it's the box and one that they had Trish back there on offer. Indiana didn't recognize right away. Look at Coleman. Air ball Cycli. and Cycli misses the layup at the other end. Great hustle by Ronnie Cycli. That'll take a lot out of a big man. And but Zurich. disappointment that he misses an easy shot. There you have the box and one again. Trish is chasing off. Thomas again wants to come in low, and he hits it. That's 10 points, and Thomas ties this game. That's the fifth time we have been tied in the first half. Cycli really tired after that first down court. Cycli. Smart. Great jumping ability, and the young man from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, hauls it down and brings it up. Now it's Garrett's turn. Cycli had an easy rebound. No one left on that side. His fifth rebound. I think Syracuse should pull the, bat the ball back out a second or two. Let Cycli get a breath. Now they get Coleman into the offense. That's six points, but he's been quiet for some time at the offensive end. They go back to just the standard zone. Now they're at a 2-3 zone. Syracuse really changing up well. Thomas putting it on the ground. It's fouled by Trish, his second. And they'll be shooting. They have gone over the limit. So we come with the 1-1. One and, one. and along with changing defenses, Beheim well, is also utilizing his bench here again his tonight. Second, seven, As Derek Brower and Stephen Thompson well, both return. Alford. Gets a sip of water at the Indiana bench and Cycli sits down. Good move by Jimmy Beheim. Cycli There's the really greatest tired. listener in college basketball, Ronnie Cycli. You know, it's interesting. Missed the front end. Talking about him listening, Brent, he said he just never was talked to the way Beheim talks to him uh, in school when he was growing up in Athens, Greece. Dave Gavitt told him, listen to what he says, not how he talks to you, which is pretty good advice. Monroe's three. Alfred got caught turning his head. And Syracuse builds a five point lead here at the 420. Brown and Thomas, they forced it. Douglas is out of bounds, however, on that far side. Jody Sylvester was right there. We've got a timeout, television timeout. We're close to the five-minute mark. We'll be right back. 
America. We are live from the vast Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. The biggest lead of the game, five for Syracuse. Now here's what a free throw shooter is up against. The replay board he will look at from that particular angle. And some of the free throw shooters have been distracted by seeing themselves up there on the replay board. Frequently here in the Superdome, the replay is right above the center court. That is not being utilized for the Final Four here this year in New Orleans. So the shooter, when he comes up there, must not pay attention to seeing himself up there and being distracted. Bray Smith checks in for the first time. And also Meyer, who just committed the first foul. And Jimmy Behan going to be upset with that call. Indiana, 40% from the field. Syracuse, 12 points out of the backcourt. Thomas with 10, and Coleman with 10 rebounds here for Beheim. And that is the third foul that we cut away from by Howard Trish. That is the major development statistically in this game right now. Brandon, what Jimmy Beheim is screaming about is that's a moving screen, and he's going to stay right, right on the official's back on that one. Trish will sit down with the three. At the line is Todd Meyer, the senior from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Now, Indiana has missed its last two free throws down at this end. Remember that. This is a superb free throw shooting team. It is when it has Steve Alford on the line. He's usually the guy that's there. Good steal. Way by Smart. He's too quick. They get it into Coleman on the turnaround. And drawing the foul, Derek Brower coming up. He'll step to the free throw line for Syracuse. The man that made that play was Stevie Thompson. Kept the ball alive on the offensive glass. Let me set this Indiana lineup on the floor. It is somewhat unusual one right now. Cree Smith. And that foul that time was on him, his first. He's out there with Meyer. It's Smart, Alford, and Thomas. Brent, what Jimmy Beheim has forced Bobby Knight to do is to go to that bench because he realizes this ball game is a lot tighter than anticipated. He's had Callaway down for a long time. He's got Garrett sitting down on that bench. Joe Hilton, number 44. So that he's had to go to the bench because of the way Jim Beheim is substituting. And he goes again as Smith will sit down and Joe Hillman, who was really one of the stars off the bench against Las Vegas, comes into the game. When he does that, that moves smart up to a forward spot, and there's that foul bugaboo for Brower again. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether he sees a replay. He'll have difficulty at the line. At both ends, if you're wondering, there's a replay, but it's a little more severe at the left end. The angle is more straight on when I was standing out there. Back to the 2-3 zone goes Syracuse. They ship, and Thomas is fouled. That's two on Brower. Cycling returns for Bayheim. Thomas was suspended well, before shot. the season got underway this year for not attending class. He got the message in a hurry from Bob Knight. As Bob says the best discipline is for a man to sit on the pine. Even worse is not even get an opportunity to play. Thomas really coming to the front tonight going after that ball offensively. The game plan put in yesterday by Coach Knight was to have Thomas go to work offensively, Billy. They really wanted to draw Coleman into foul trouble. Coleman hasn't picked up a single personal in this game so far. So Thomas has been contributing offensively, but at the other side, the freshman has been very cool so far tonight. Indiana pulls back to within a point. But Brent Cycli's back in the game with 2.55 to go. He's got two fouls on him. He's got to be careful not to pick up that third. Douglas off the dribble. He's a creator. Not just a penetrator, he's a creator, that young man. Alfred hasn't been able to get an opening. There he goes. He, they weren't even shading on him. You look like he could get his three-point shot off. They close that seam quickly, don't they, Billy? Now Alfred out on top. Smart's three is an air ball. Coleman rebounds again. That's his 13th rebound in this game. Monroe's three. And Stephen Thompson at the other end comes up 
and now it is Cycli and Syracuse dominating the glass. That's the story. You don't see Indiana take many bad shots, and when I, I say a bad shot, although Sparks was a pretty good shot from there, they can get a better one. He'd like to see Alfred put something up. There you go. The three from him is good, his third three. He has nine points, all threes here in the first half. And Bobby Knight really getting on smart because what he wants him to know is the ball should be in Alfred's hands out there. Alfred's going to have trouble with Stevie Thompson inside if Syracuse can get him the ball. Fifteen on the shot clock when Douglas went inside. Ball is out of bounds at that end, and Thomas was trying to save it, put it back in play for the Hoosiers, and could not. So against Bob Knight, the Orangemen will have an opportunity to score again. Look at that huge difference. Nine three offensive rebounds. Cycli can't get the handle again. Several times he's had difficulty holding on to the ball. They whip it for Thomas against Pusher, makes a turn into tight, and Thompson comes back out for Syracuse. Crowd here, the Indiana fans, thought that Thomas was hammered on the inside that time. They want the foul. Good patience by Douglas. You know, I bet, I bet you this kid played a lot of playground ball against bigger people. He's learned how to go inside and never fear about getting a shot off. Watch him. Here he goes. And he just brings it right up. Thompson is in there. He's played against bigger people, too. But again, they miss on that trip. And Indiana can come down and tie it or go ahead if Alford can hit a three. Shot clock off. Last shot of the half. Indiana will bring it on down. Close to the 10-second mark. Syracuse content to let him sit on the outside. This is halftime, and the end of this game can come down to something like this. Syracuse has looked the favorite Hoosiers straight in the eye, and they have not blinked. And look at what they do. They switch to a little box and run. They're looking to try to keep it away from Alfred. They don't do it. The three at the buzzer. Four threes for Steve Alford. And Indiana takes the halftime lead as a result. The drama continues here in New Orleans. The end of the first half. Take a look at this shot, how he got free. Hillman screened off Cycli. Alford rose up, pulled the trigger. We've come to the end of the half. It is Indiana 34, Syracuse 33. Jim Nance and James Brown are standing by. David Robinson's with them. We'll return to the Superdome in New Orleans after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Michelin. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. And by Unisys, the combined power of Sperry and Burroughs. Unisys, the power of two. What a first half at the Superdome. In the national championship game, Steve Alford with four three-pointers including one at the buzzer, and Indiana one point up on Syracuse at halftime. Jim Nance back on our set here at the Superdome, and I'm delighted to be joined by college basketball's player of the year, David Robinson of Navy. David, congratulations on an outstanding career. Well, thanks. It's, it's been a magic carpet ride for me. Uh, you know, aside from all the hoopla, I think that I'm going to remember the, the biggest things my, my teammates' relationships. Uh, the other seniors on my team have been with me for four years. I like to say a lot of Carl Lee, Brennan, Doug Wojcik. They, they've been great to me, and I'm going to remember them more than all the awards or anything else we've done this year. David, your future. You graduate at Annapolis on May the 20th. Now, to let the folks know, uh, the Naval Academy has trimmed your five-year commitment down to two years because of your seven-foot frame, which leaves you with two options. The NBA next year on a part-time basis or more, or possibly wait a year and play for the United States in the Olympics. What are you thinking right now? Well, right now, it, it's been tough for me because we've been playing so much in the season, and now after the season, I've been doing a lot of traveling, and, and it's been a real busy time for me. So I haven't had a lot of time to stop and, and, and look into things. So. I guess uh, I'll be making the decision real soon, but right now I have no idea what I'm going to do. What would it take for you to stay and compete in the Olympics in 88? Well, I had a great experience at the World Championships. Uh, I had a, a lot of fun with my teammates, a lot of fun traveling, 
and uh, that alone it, it makes makes it attractive to go to play in the Olympics. So, you know, both things have a, a lot of things that attract me to them. David, with the commitment being trimmed from five years to two years, it was greeted with some controversy in some corners. Uh, do you feel any mixed emotions at all since you were an exception in that rule? Well, I don't. I don't feel like they're making a, a big exception for me. You know, it's it's been a it's been kind of a two way thing. I, I've done a lot for them, and they've done obviously a lot for me. So. I, I feel good that they, they understand my position and they, they help me out some. You mentioned Ronnie Cycli. You two were teammates on that world championship team in Madrid right, last year. Right. In fact, uh, your Navy team knocked Syracuse out of the tournament last year, so you've seen a lot of Ronnie Cycli. How much has this guy improved? Oh, I saw him play this summer a little bit, and even from last year to this summer, he's, he improved a lot. And, and I, I saw, you know, at the beginning of the season, I thought he was just going to dominate the Big East and everything. And I was a little surprised that he started off slow, but in the tournament, he's been doing a great job. Who do you like in the second half, David? Oh, I have to go with the big man, Ronnie, and, uh, and Syracuse. I think they're playing real, real well and real confidently right now. David, thank you for joining us, and thank you for many special memories. Good luck in the future. Thank you very much. And we'll continue with a look at the state of college sports when we continue live at the Superdome, the national championship game, in just a moment. The NCAA. Indiana leading it in the national championship game, 34-33. Right now, let's go to my colleague, James Brown, who's outside the Indiana locker room. James? All right, Jim. Indiana has to feel somewhat comfortable going into the locker room with a one-point halftime lead because they're being out-rebounded 25-18 to 18 overall. The big story on the offensive boards, Syracuse leading that 9-3. to three. Syracuse has missed a lot of easy shots, and that old nemesis free throw shooting has been hurting. Indiana can take control in the second half if they can solve the rebounding riddle. Back to you, Jim. All right, James, you know, this is a big night for college sports, a celebration of a tournament that has become one of the major events in our sporting calendar. But beneath all the hoopla and the trappings is evidence of growing pains, crises that are documented in the daily newspapers and on the evening news, recruiting scandals, drug abuse, illegal payments, and so forth. Now, to give us a better idea of where things stand, CBS Sports has sought out some of the major personalities in and around the collegiate community to get their views on the current state of campus life and college sports. Everybody sees the dollar sign. Clink, clink, the cash register rings. And I read an article one time by a writer from New Haven Register, Connecticut, by the name of George Wadley. And I think he, if I could steal from him, he best describes, I think, the present condition. He says, what's the problem with major college athletics today? He says, it's patently obvious. It's greed. Who's to blame? The administrators, the NCAA, the coaches, and yes, even we in the media. We live off of it. I think that probably the miracle is not that we have an SMU every now and then, but we don't, that the miracle is that we don't have an SMU a day, uh, given uh, the tremendous pressures on the coaches and the amount of money and so forth that are involved uh, uh, in this process now. I don't think there's any question it's big business. I just, you know, the basketball game we're watching tonight is worth about a million bucks each team, I guess, or close to it. No, I think it's big business, but that doesn't mean it has to be dirty business. After we played a game in the NCAA tournament, that was said on the bus on the way back home that uh, we had to shoot a couple of free throws, and uh, one of the people on the bus had said that that was for about a hundred and some thousand dollars, and it really shook us up because we really don't think about those things out on the court when you're playing. Television, in my view, is not the cause of the problems. It is part of the issue, to be sure. But what the colleges do with the money that we pay them uh, is the crucial issue. Uh, people take a look at the big television contracts and they think that universities are making millions and millions of dollars through their athletic programs. So this is why we have all the abuses that college presidents are willing to turn their heads and athletic directors and coaches for that revenue. The fact is there, there's a few schools that are doing very well financially while most of us are, are just struggling to make ends meet. I told our kids, our student body, I was speaking to them uh, last November, and that question came up. Coach, what do you think about drug testing athletes? I said, hey, if they made me president for a day, I'd drug test all of you. And, and, uh, and they all laughed and got a big kick out of that. And I said, and the reason I would is to find out if some of you have a problem. And, and if you got a problem, then let's do something about it. And that's why I'm all for drug testing. Universities are supposed to teach our children respect for other people's rights 
And here's an organization of schools running roughshod over those rights. And when the NCAA is trying to make uh, a point as far as athletes should be the same as students, and I believe if you're going to test athletes, then therefore you have to test all the students and everyone else involved in, uh, in life in general. And, uh, but to point out an athlete, I think that's stereotyping an athlete and making him look like that he's a drug user when you have to mandatory testing. The athletic department ought to come under the same scrutiny that the library comes under, the facilities for your, for your engineering school and what have you. And if, you, if, if the athletic department is found wanting, they should not be accredited. I think that once you see a person has encountered the educational experience of athletics and gone into society and been able to adjust, I think that that's very good. But so many of the kids live in the fantasy part of athletics that they aren't able to make that adjustment. And that's what you find very fr frightening at times. That athlete. Uh, should take uh, from uh, that institution uh, educational skills sufficient to allow him to live uh, as a normal and productive and contributing uh, citizen in this high-tech uh, society. If he does not take that, then he has been ripped off. I want him to go away and say, well, I learned more in basketball than in any class I took at Indiana. And basketball was by far the most educational experience that I had when I was at Indiana. And if that kid says, well, chemistry 401 was my, and I want to find out what the hell that guy is teaching in chemistry 401, because I ought to be teaching it in basketball. CBS sports coverage of the NCAA basketball championship will continue with second half action after this message and a word from your local station. NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great tastes of McDonald's. Mazda cars and trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. And by United Airlines. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. Ready to go in the second half with Sam Alford, the high school coach of his son Steve looking on and Rick Callaway checking back into the lineup for Indiana. Now he has averaged almost 16 points a game for night in this tournament but he sat out played only six minutes and picked up two early fouls. Alford's four three pointers build a one point lead Indiana up by one we start the second half Indiana the higher seed they're wearing the home whites they're unbeaten in that jersey this year they're 22 and 0 and Syracuse are the traveling orange. Start out man to man with Monroe on Alford. First taking Callaway. They get it into Garrett Lowe, and going up with him is that freshman Coleman, and what a game he's having. There's that arm span discrepancy again. He's listed at 6'10, but plays seven feet. With those Sam Perkins arms. You mentioned it was Purvis Ellison a year ago. Will it be Derek Coleman? Callaway not there. And underneath it was still another rebound for Coleman, number 14. Got a chance to go for a record. We had Wade break the record with assists with 18 for UNLV Saturday. Monroe penetrates. Finally comes up and he is fouled. He'll be shooting. And down is Callaway. And every time he goes down, you have to pay careful attention because of the difficulty as he experienced with that knee. We have got to say something about courage that this young man has displayed all season long Billy I would agree he was operated on missed five games that's a great dish by Monroe particularly to avoid the charge against Garrett there's Callaway going down and you know the kid went down in the LSU game coming off that tight screen he laid there in a lot of pain and then he went out and ran around underneath the gym until he could get that leg going again and back out there he only played what six minutes in that first half that really hurts the Indiana club Ronnie Cycli shooting two. Cycli not distracted by the replay board that time. Hits two at that end, and Syracuse regains the lead here as we start the second half. Thomas comes up under pressure, and there's another rebound for Syracuse. One and out for the Hoosiers. Lead pass, and he overlet him out of bounds, uh, Trish. 
Uh, Jimmy Beheim cheering on that move by Douglas. And I think he just wants to keep him pumped up out there, but there was a case where Douglas one more or two more dribbles, and he could have had himself a real nice break situation. Jimmy Beheim doing a nice job changing up defensive men on offense. It's hard to chase him all night long by yourself. Now it is Monroe there with him. Alford, 0 of 3, shooting the 2. Smart on the penetration, couldn't get the roll. Got away from Thomas. Out of the pack comes Monroe. Pull up. And he hits a 2-point shot. That's 7 points for Greg Monroe. Seen Syracuse a lot this year. That's the first time I've seen Monroe take the ball on the break and pull up for the jumper. He normally gives it up. Thomas turns, gets inside Cycli, who does not take the foul, lets him shoot the layup. 14 for Thomas. Great inside pivot moves by Thomas. He's really been well drilled with the pump fakes inside. Douglas penetrates, throws it up, and Garrett out with the rebound, and here's Smart. Monroe's back, Smart very quick, pulls up. And the Hoosiers at the 1740 mark go back up. It's hard to visualize this team without the two JC transfers, isn't it, Brent? They just give them the athletic ability that Bobby Knight's team lacks so much of. Cycli's got position. Starting to get annoyed. There he is. On the turnaround, couldn't get the roll. Garrett takes away the miss, and here's Alford. Bangs another three in. That's five threes for Steve Alford shows you what great concentration he had. He looked off the defender with the fake of the pass and still was able to pull up and hit the jumper. Fans really starting to get in the game a little bit. Syracuse has to be patient. Cycli fouled by Garrett. A chance for a three-point play. That is foul number three. Ronnie Cycli showing us something there, Brent because Garrett has done a good job on him defensively, but he's open. He's playing right on his back. Now, you see Garrett pushing him off with his hands down low? Cycli goes right up, has a lot of power there because Garrett had a hand on the ball. So the young man who lived in Lebanon until he was 11 years old at the free throw line, I said, Ronnie, why did the family move? He said, because of all of the military problems. He said, youngsters were carrying guns. My family did not want any part of that, and so we left. Not a bad walk-on. They wasn't even recruited by Jimmy Bayon. There's a tradition of his family attending school at Syracuse. Derek Bauer has replaced Pullman. Ball out of bounds on the turnover at six. That made Knight hot. He's going to take Smart out of the ball game. Now, Bobby getting a little impatient there with Keith Smart. And really, Brower is the guy that caused that problem. And Joe Hillman back in the game. Smart sits down. He sat quite a bit against Las Vegas, you'll recall, on Saturday afternoon. It was hard, though, for him to visualize that Brower was going to hold up the cutter. Smart may be trying to do too much. Douglas on the turnaround. Offensive rebound. Cycling. That's what happens. When Douglas penetrates, everybody is kind of frozen inside defensively. Therefore, they're not in good rebounding position. Cycling took advantage. Dangerous pass. Hillman gets it back in Alford's hands outside. Good internal defensive pressure by Syracuse. Five. Made it tough on him. Five and seconds. on the turnover, it goes the other way. This is a great defensive performance by Beheim here tonight. What's impressive is a guy like Brower coming off the bench without the quickness, but just playing good position defense. He didn't reach for the ball at all on that occasion. Hillman can't stay with Douglas. Douglas off the pull-up is short. Brower couldn't get a handle. Thomas wrestled it away, and here's Alford. Douglas is so quick, he tries to steal every pass. Knocked away, and a foul committed on Brower. This is the longest we have seen in this tournament that Knight has not been able to get Callaway into the scoring column as Coleman, who has been rebounding like a monster, comes in and cycling, sits down, and Steve Isle now checks in. What do those offensive rebounds mean? Well, second chance points are the result. 
and Syracuse here tonight has 11 second chance points to only two for Indiana. No, Brent, Bobby Knight may be a master, but tonight he's having to match up Beheim, who's getting the better of it with the substitutions. There's the three. Monroe. Bobby Knight keeps trying to match up Jimmy Beheim. Normally, Knight is the guy you try to go ahead and counter, but he's the counter puncher in this game. Alford, that's six three-point shots. He's keeping Indiana in the game with his threes. 18 total points. Nothing there for Monroe. Good step out. The Big Ten against the Big East. The best of the two conferences, the way it should be. Hillman stayed with him. Smart play by Coleman. Douglas wants to take Hillman. Hillman positioning himself on defense. He's not as quick. But he gets his feet there. Now they'll have to move rather quickly as the shot clock runs down. Great dish! Great dish! That shows you something. Down to four seconds, they get the dish inside. Super play by Monroe and Brower again, using that wide body tail of his. Bobby Knight can't believe it. Look at Brower sitting down. The key to that play, he is so wide when he sits down, he uses up about four to five feet. Good hands. And here's what he doesn't do well. But he buries it. When respect ball game, there's also some agony here in the stands. There's Elaine Beheim, the lovely wife of Jim Beheim, and sometimes we've seen her put her head down and not even watch the action. Then one of Bobby Knight's sons, Tim Knight, watching over here. And he has to not feel too good about how things have gone so far as far as his dad's team is concerned. They trail it by four at 14-28. Those loved ones and those relatives, they can't do anything about it. They can't substitute. They have to sit there and just agonize over their husbands or their father's teams and what's going on on the floor. It's tough, tough moments for those people. Syracuse stays in the man-to-man. -man. They've played every defense with good effectiveness tonight. Syracuse has an 11-3 run over the last three minutes, and they have built this lead. Alford cut off. They move to Callaway, who is scoreless, still scoreless, and another rebound for Coleman. That's 15. Brent, every rebound he gets is with such authority. He's about eight inches to a foot over the other players, and he grabs them with two hands. The NBA will leave him alone for four years. He'll be a great one. Brower bangs it in. Let that young man mature. Using the wide body, got a little jump stop, and what's helping him with Brower in there? Cycle, he can rest and not get in any further foul trouble. So Jimmy Beheim getting a break with that bench. Alloway loses it, and Monroe has it. Oh, behind the Things are going Syracuse's way. Trish. It is a crisis moment for Knight and the Hoosiers here at 13 minutes. They need to do something positive. Well, they got the ball in the right man's hands here. They have not been able to do much inside lately. Thomas can't get it to fall. Coleman out with the pass, and here's Monroe. They the score is starting to feel it. They score here. They've got to get a timeout, does Indiana. Run down by Thomas. That's a good foul. Indiana had a breakaway. So they slow the breakaway with the personal foul. And, and Brent, you've got to get a... Billy, near the end of this game, you and I will select the Chevrolet players of the game, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both schools. Brennan, I think a little bit more athletic ability than the way of Keith Smart, and here he comes into the ball game. I thought Bobby Knight wouldn't keep him there much longer. They've got to get some scoring out of somebody but Alfred and Thomas. And they have Dean Garrett in, and Garrett has it wind up in his hands and contributes immediately. His first field goal of the second half, eight points for the game. 52-46, Syracuse over Indiana. Here comes Cycli back in. Jimmy Beheim's mind really working. Good Douglas steal. loses it. And fouls Hillman, his third personal foul. 
Now, just as you point out, Bella, Cycli returns for Syracuse, and there you saw 23, Keith Smart back on the floor. Brower sits down, and Hillman goes over to the Indiana bench. Both subs did a good job for their ball clubs. Quality minutes. Syracuse up by the six. Indiana would like to get Callaway on track. And Smart with Coleman committing his first personal foul of the game. Now that's what Smart gives Indiana. When you're down like this, you bring in your athlete, and he just takes the ball to the hoop. Billy, I want to follow up as Hillman quickly comes back for night. He's going to rest Callaway. Stephen Thompson back in for Circus. I left the statement hanging a moment ago about Coleman when I said if the NBA leaves him alone. I really should have said the agents. The flesh peddlers who go to these campuses and tell some of these freshmen and sophomores that they should come and make the easy bucks. Gentlemen, take a look around at the young men who have gone out early after last year and have not done that much in the NBA. What you see in this game is not what you get sometimes at the professional level. All right, Smart hits that free throw now. We're at the 12-minute mark here. It's 52-47. Syracuse leading Indiana. It's been a dandy all the way. Andre would be smart to give that ball up against Smart. Smart too quick for him. Cycling moves on Garrett, and Garrett was right there with a great defensive play. Don't you love the way the officials are letting him play, too? Alfred's three. 21 total points. Seven three-pointers Steve Alford has hit here tonight. And he is four away from becoming the greatest scorer in Big Ten history. Cycling gets it back outside. There must be something about that side of the court. Remember what happened to Freddie Brown? He threw the ball over there to the imaginary player also. Jim Beheim calls this timeout. Beheim wants to regroup the Orange. We'll be right back. We're live from the Superdome, New Orleans, Louisiana, along with Billy Packer. I'm Brent Musburger. Syracuse leading Indiana 52 to 50 here with 11-16 to go in regulation. Hillman and Smart bringing the ball up. Offered the third guard in this set for night. Thomas and Garrett are up front. And Syracuse again changes defenses. They go back to the 2-3 zone. Behind changing on almost every timeout situation. Offered looking for a hole. Thompson and Douglas, the two men in the backcourt defensively for Syracuse, the starting front line in there for Beheim. And they hit Thomas with a great pass from Smart. There's the athlete. Smart can just go inside that zone, go up in the air, and then find a free man. You can't teach that. Coleman, and it's rejected. Indiana, a chance to take the lead here. I like that decision making by Hillman. He did not throw what looked like an apparent opening for help for a smart inside. This kid really makes good decisions with the ball. Here's Alford. He misses, so he is 7 of 10 now in shooting threes here. Has not shot a two point field goal yet tonight. Actually, he shoots better three point percentage than two. Oh, and they pick him clean again. Great Indiana defense the last couple of trips, and Hillman is taken away, and that time it was Coleman coming in. I think he scared himself a little bit coming down with that two-handed, look at this two-handed block. He actually catches this ball, and if he hadn't been knocked out of bounds, I'm not so sure that wasn't a foul. Now watch this, Hillman, Hillman's underneath him. Could have been called a foul. So the freshman from Detroit continues to contribute here with Greg Monroe returning and Stephen Thompson out for Syracuse. Here's where that three-point play by Offord really breaks your back. Hillman penetrated and here's Smart again sliding inside creating a basket. There's that athletic ability what that athlete. you spoke about. What an athlete. They say he's got a 42-inch vertical leap or maybe higher and I think that's legitimate. 
Our lead has changed hands 14 times here tonight in the Superdome. What is it about this place? We have great championships in New Orleans. Monroe comes up and bangs in a two. Who will ever forget North Carolina and Georgetown? James Worthy and Patrick Ewing and Michael Jordan winning it. That was one of the best. Now tonight, again we see one going down the wire. Inside, it's Thomas. Cycli was there, and they wanted goaltending at that end. They don't get it. Indiana's always been great on defensive transition, being able to get back and stop your break. They did it again. Hillman and Douglas collide down there at the baseline. Douglas has had some difficulty shooting here tonight. He has missed his last five attempts. He is on four of ten overall for the game. You can tell every time Douglas sees Hillman on him, he thinks he's too quick for him and tries to take him one-on-one, -on -one, but Hillman plays good position defense. Had that very valuable short spin again against LSU. Played very well against Vegas. That's 10 overall. Out of Spingarn High School, you all probably know, or at least many of you do, Dave Bing played there. But you know, he told me that Elgin Baylor played at that high school and held all the scoring records. I didn't realize that when I talked to him the other day. That's right, Elgin. The first really big time player to come out of D.C. and go elsewhere. And since that time, they've been loaded with high school prospects in that town. That, that bench stint that Smart had looks like it made him fresh. Again penetrating, cycling, rebounding the miss. Fifty-four on the three-point shot by the Syracuse General. No, we can't get it to fall. Alford was in there. He and Trish collided, and Trish draws the personal foul. That's his fourth. Well, Trish is just the wrong place at the wrong time all night tonight. Jimmy Beheim wants it called the other way. I think the officials doing some kind of job in this kind of game. They let them play so they can get a nice flow in this ball game. It's going to be Stevie Thompson coming back up. It's not a bad matchup for Syracuse. They can afford to play the three guards because Indiana's playing the three guards. Now the referee again tonight, Joe Forte out of Georgia, suburb of Atlanta. This crew did not work either of the semifinal games, unlike I think it was a year ago. They didn't choose from the semifinals. They brought three crews here. And Garrett on the turnaround hits the field goal. Ten points for the Indiana center. So Garrett's been able to shoot over Cycli, and Cycli has not been able to shoot over Garrett. Cycli playing with two fouls. Coleman with one. Five team fouls, Syracuse. Four, Indiana, and Douglas creates. What happened on the inside? The Indiana defenders figured that Douglas would pass instead of shoot. Therefore, they held their ground. Boy, he's been a live wire here in the last few minutes, hasn't he? He runs that point total quickly to 16. Now Thomas misses, and Garrett coming back up. And he was well defended. Ball was knocked out of bounds. That's Stephen Thompson. He plays so tall for his size out of Crenshaw High School. One of his friends out there, and someone who played there a little bit before, was Daryl Strawberry. He says Strawberry could have been a big-time basketball player if he hadn't opted for baseball. Monroe stays on the ground, doesn't go for the offered pump fake. They stay in the 2-3 zone. Thomas, and the personal foul is going to be called inside. Coleman was on that side, and Coleman will pick up number two with Knight bringing Keith Smart and Steve Alford over. So we hope you're enjoying our action live from the Superdome here in New Orleans, Louisiana, along with Jim Nance, and James Brown, Billy Packer. I'm Brent Musburger. We've had a good one here tonight. Syracuse, a four point underdog at the time the game began, has built a five point lead over the Indiana Hoosiers with senior Daryl Thomas at the free throw line for Coach Knight. Billy, all month long we have maintained that the five starters on the floor for Bayheim have as good a chemistry as anybody we've seen. There's a man with pretty good chemistry today is 
hands and the ball seemed to always meet on every rebound. Coleman. 17 rebounds for Derek Coleman. Well, the freshmen have been key. Michael Jordan here in 82. Mervis Ellison. Reggie Williams in 84. Thompson gives it up. Had the right idea, and Sykley did not have good footwork on that play. He should have had a layup. Now Smart penetrates a nice pass underneath to Thomas. You're right about that bench stint for Smart. Woke him up. Well, Bobby Knight knew he couldn't keep him there long. The thing that is interesting is Callaway has not played, and Brent, what I think has to be wrong is his leg has to bother him. Oh, Cycle's hands and a wound up as a turnover. That's 13 turnovers for Syracuse. Indiana can tie it or take a lead. You know, Hillman, since being on the floor, he's handed out six assists. So the three guard lineup working for Knight. Well, what you have now is. Look at Smart go to work on the inside. Right, what you have now is Syracuse having to match up with Indiana's three guard offense. And Jimmy Bayon going to take a timeout right here. Our eighth tie. Coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the 1987 German-engineered Volkswagens and your Volkswagen dealers. So we get set to start at 531. Another huge crowd on hand. You know, there's a gentleman watching this game tonight, Walter Byers. He's been the executive director of the NCAA since 1951, as the whistle is blown. And when you think about what he has meant to this particular event through the years, it's really a tribute to Walter, this is his last one as the executive director, and we've got another huge crowd on hand, and it has grown tremendously under his leadership of the NCAA. 64,959, Walter, all of us wish you very much the best in your retirement. Monroe misses the three, and another rebound for Coleman, comes up and puts it in. What a game that freshman's having. He's the plastic man, he's reaching those arms out, another great rebound. And now Syracuse goes back to their man to man. Beheim really doing a masterful Great job. Great pass inside to Smart. Rolling the backdoor play, he caught open, and that's 13 for Smart. Tied again, 63 all. Now we're down to crunch time. Every trip critical for these two teams. I think Coleman's the guy that would like to have the ball, but they're not finding him. Douglas got the roll. Nice, soft touch on that particular shot. And he's doing that right over Smart. So these two athletes, Douglas and Smart, putting on quite a show. With their ability to go inside. Trish taking Hillman. Smart cuts again on the inside. And that time, Cycli was there, and the orange come away. On roll for the three. He was off balance. Missed it, and Thomas caught it, and here's Alford breaking free in a foot race with Monroe. You don't see a senior do that very often, Brent, but what happened to Monroe, he knew what he wanted to do, but he was not in the proper balance to get off that three-point shot. That is the first two-pointer for Steve Alford tonight after seven threes. Had luck at 65. We have 16 fouls on Syracuse and only five on Indiana. Yep, Hillman on the slap. They had one to give. Uh, was he in the act of shooting as he came up? It's going to be a two-shotter. So a uh, summary of this game as Trish, the co-captain, comes to the line. Look how well Syracuse has shot. But they have turned it over. Alford with the seven threes and one two, and Coleman yanks down 18 rebounds. A magnificent college basketball game. Too tight, man. You know, last year when this man moved Addison to guard, it kind of took off the chemistry that Syracuse had last year. Now he's back to his normal position. And I think the chemistry on this ball club is so much better. Syracuse hitting 60% from the field or from the free throw line. 9 of 15. There is their 10th. So they're 10 of 16. 
Indiana six of ten. Off the cut, it's smart again. You know, they may have to make a change and put Trish on him because he's going right over the top of Douglas. The matchup is tough. Heath Smart here in the second half, and now it's Derek Coleman short on the shot. And a strong rebound by Smart. He has taken over here in the second half. 11 of his 15 points in this half. Offer tied up. Wanted Smart. Got it taken away by the Orange defense. And Butler comes away with it. Would you believe the move? Syracuse leads. What he did, Brent, he faked the behind-the-back pass, and that just froze the defender. Keith Smart wants that ball. He's open. Coleman out there all the way on Alford. And a foul called. Now watch this. He'll freeze the defender. He looks at the defender. Fakes like he's going behind the back. And do you see Hellman? It almost cost his feet up. Great play. They get the ball. There was no personal. The man open is Thomas, and this time we get it. Cycli takes him down his third. Ronnie Cycli has played a long time without picking up that foul. Billy, take me back to Knight's two other championships. You were there in Philadelphia when he won his last one. Before that, the unbeaten team. Was he pressed like this with about two and a half minutes to no, go? No, not at all. He won those games Three going nine. away. They were tight for, the, for about a half, and then Bobby Knight's team just turned it on, and they won really easily. And that game in Philadelphia, they took North Carolina apart. And in 1976, even with Bobby Wilkerson going out in the first game in Philadelphia that they played, Indiana was just too strong for Michigan in the second half. This is a much, much tougher road to try to get his third and put him even further along in history, matching becoming only the third man to win more than two. Adolph Rupp and John Wooden, the other two men, obviously. Cycle open, Garrett's pushing. Brent, what happened to Garrett? He got on Cycli's back. Now, he's been doing a good job all night, but that time he was down much too low. We'll see this right here. Cycli's got him way down low. Now, Garrett's been pushing him from behind all night, but a great job by Cycli to put it up inside. And four fouls on Garrett with Cycli at the line. He can complete the three-point play. Coleman. Coleman has another one. 19 rebounds for Derek Coleman, the freshman. And what a critical one that was with Syracuse up by two. And they get another 45 on the clock. Well, two points can't bother you, especially if you have offered on your club. Timeout will be called by Beheim. Now that leaves Beheim with only one timeout and 142 left in regulation. We'll be back. <laughs> 142 left here in regulation. Syracuse leading Indiana. Timeouts left for Jim Beheim down to one. Knight still has four. Both teams into the bonus situation. And in a jump ball, Syracuse would take possession out of bounds. We have two players with four fouls, one on each team, Trish for Syracuse and Garrett for Knight playing with the four fouls. Both players are on the floor for the stretch. Brent, I mentioned that two-point lead. When you've got the great three-point shooter by, like Alford, that can't bother you too much because you can get that one back. Clear out. Douglas. Douglas. And Indiana was there defensively. Huh? Here it comes away. Surprised they attacked so quickly. They had 26 left yep. on the 45, and they went right now, and Smart comes back at the other end with a driving layup. 17 points, 13 here in this half. Tied at 70. Now Garrett's switched over to play Coleman. They've got Thomas playing on Cycli. Bobby Knight switched men. 
Thomas tried to draw the foul. Chris oh. gets it to fall, and inside of a minute, Syracuse leads. That ball almost was under the rim and just worked its way over the top. Remember the end of the half? It was an offered three that gave Indiana a one-point lead. Now he's got Trish on him, the taller man. Jimmy Beheim making a lot of great moves. Smart off the penetration, couldn't get that one to fall. And Trish coming away with the rebound, and he will be shooting. You can't fall smart, though. That was a good shot, Brent. He put it up on the baseline. What was one of the keys at the start of this ball game? Foul shooting by Syracuse. We'll and see if they can hit them. They have been way above average here in the second half. They have, against Knight, hit seven of nine from the free throw line. Now, Knight wants one of his four timeouts. This is what you call icing the shoot. Billy Packer, everyone saw Knight complain. Did he have a beef, or was this a legitimate foul on Alford? No, there's a great shot by Smart. Trish does a good job, and Alford comes down on the arm. So good now call. Trish comes up to the free throw line. He is one of two from the line. But he shot only three of nine from the field, a total of seven. The senior co-captain. It's three. Well, Bobby Knight did what you're supposed to do, is try to ice him a little bit. This now is a he big can, one. If he makes it four, remember Indiana would need two baskets. Short. He misses that one. Smart has it, dribbles it out. He... Smart comes up inside of Monroe, hits the two. And a quick timeout is called at the 30-second mark. A smart play by Smart. He did not try to be a hero and hit the three. You've got to have the two scores now to win this at 30 seconds. Timeout. seconds to go for a national championship and you can see Elaine Beheim could not even watch Howard Trish shoot that free throw as her husband's team battles to win number one for the school and Brent Indiana very seldom presses but here they go full court he wanted to foul on Thomas against Cycli but he got the ball right away to the freshman and they will put him on the free throw line good strategy by Bobby Knight Fouls immediately. This has not been one of the strong points for Syracuse. Bobby Knight would rather have the ball in his hands. No clock, no shot clock on anymore. For Only two seconds tick away with Garrett replacing Isle. Gives him a little bit of rebounding down here at the free throw line. Coleman, eight points for the game, two of three from the line, 19 rebounds, and Knight will attempt to ice the freshman. That'll leave both coaches with one timeout in 28 seconds. We'll be right back. Syracuse 73, Indiana 72, with Syracuse coming up to the free throw line. And now two men become enormous stories. Derek Coleman, the freshman from Detroit, will be shooting one at one, even if he hits both of them. Even if Coleman makes both of these, Indiana has a chance to tie. And that means that Steve Alford, who is at 7 of 10 from three-point range, will be the man they'll try to free. He has scored only two points in the last 11 minutes. So we come down to two of the key personalities in what has been a great championship game here from the Superdome in New Orleans. He's short. Indiana can win it. And he decided to put Douglas on Alford. And they go man to man. Smart takes the shot. Oh, okay. And the Hoosiers with three seconds. Go ahead. Nobody stopped the clock. Nobody stopped the clock. But the clock did stop at the one-second mark. Syracuse with a timeout. Keith Smart, with 17 points in the second half, has moved the Hoosiers to within one second of a national championship. Right now, let's go back to what Billy Cubs. We'll see the shot right here. Good dish. 
Get the bat ball back out to Smart. Now remember how much time he spent on the bench. There's that great leaping ability, and he drills a super shot. Let's go back to what Billy Tubbs did and see if Jimmy Bayheim will try a similar play. And that is to go ahead and see if the man will touch the ball on the guy who's out of bounds. Also, see if they'll run the baseline screen to try to draw a charge against Indiana. And if you're Syracuse, other than that, you've got to go all the way. And there's Bobby Knight moving on into history. He wants to know where the clock is stopped immediately. He wants to know how many seconds will Bayheim have to work with here as the lead changes hands in a great college championship game for the 18th time. And against Bayheim, it was the young man from Baton Rouge, Keith Smart, who brought agony to the face of the Syracuse coach, who said, why couldn't you have stopped it before? I needed at least three to get this going. Now Knight explaining how he wants to set up He's only up by a point. Now the other thing, Brent, there may be a little bit more than one second on the clock. So you have time to go the length of the court. Bobby Knight calling a timeout. He's not sure exactly what he wants to see. He, he wants to take a look at what Syracuse is employing out there. He'll go back to go ahead and reset. Billy, I want to quickly follow up what you said, because I'm sure that confused somebody when you said more than a second you tell everybody what you meant by that well the, the game doesn't end until the horn sounds so you may see double zero up there and there still be some time left when i talk about time i'm not talking about centuries here i'm talking about split seconds we saw that in the, in the illinois purdue game earlier this year with zero on the clock but the horn had not yet sounded in the key ball game and if you're jimmy Bayheim, i think you've got to use all the alternatives that, that billy dubs did because that long pass the length of the court may not be all you can do to win it. second away and remember that Indiana as a school is 4-0 and in NCAA championship game night unbeaten in two of them surprisingly Bobby Knight does not put Garrett on the passer I thought he put Garrett on Coleman to prevent the long pass but he guard puts nobody on Coleman here it goes Indiana wins the championship Keith Smart is the hero
We're down here with Coach Bob Knight and his hero, Keith Smart. Bob, your reaction now to a third championship for you well, as a coach? It was so great. That, to me as a coach, it doesn't mean anything, Brent. And I, 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 I mean that from this standpoint. Sure, I'm tickled. But for these kids to come back like they did and to hang in the game the way they did, and for these last two years, my first thought is what these kids have done, and especially what this kid right here has done. And how about the young man, Keith Smart, who spent time well, out your bench and came in. Keith, tell us about the winning field goal. Well, I don't know about the winning field goal, but I just know if we had some time on the clock, the guy we've been together for so long that we was going to be all right. The shot just came to me. I was able to hit it. Long, long, hard road for you. I didn't know if you were going to be the man to take that last shot, but Keith came in there and did it for you. Keith said it all year when they jumped to me and guarded me tight. He's always opened up things. And he's been great to play with this year. It's all worth it. All worth it. Keith, Keith what, what does it feel like coming all the way from junior college in one year to lead a team to the ground? Nothing can match the way we, I feel right now, you know. But we've been together for so long, and I just, I'm going to miss this guy right here. I love all the rest of the team. Super job for Ryan. All right. Here is the winning shot. We take another look at it. Daryl Thomas, your thoughts about that winning field goal? Well, it was designated for Steve, of course. But they, the ball was we were moving the ball around. And then they threw it into me. I looked at Terry Coleman, and shot safety didn't move. So I saw Keith on behind me, so I kicked it out to him and bucked it. It was bucking. Oh, no, it was it, Joe Hillman, how did you view the play? I just saw the same thing as Gerald saw. He kicked it in the post. It was meant to go to Steve. He kicked it back out to Keith. Keith went to the baseline and shot it. I went right to the bucket for a board or anything, and it went straight down, and that was it. We want to get Rick Callum. Are you hurt tonight, or are you just going to have to sit for a while? I just had to sit for a while. I wasn't moving on offense. And Coach wanted to go to the three-guard offense, so he just decided to take me out, and I was just cheering on the bench. Well, that's part of winning the championship that's ball right. game. You carried them during the regional, and now you had an opportunity to watch guys like Hillman and Keith Smart do it now. I know. I just, I'm going to go find Keith and give him the biggest kiss they ever had. All right. Congratulations. You know, there was a great performance by both teams here tonight, Indiana and Syracuse. Let's go to James Brown. All right, Brent, thank you very much. Coach Beheim, a tough loss to say the least. What would you do differently if you had the opportunity to do it over again, Coach? I don't ever second guess myself, James. I leave that up to you guys. I thought our kids played their heart out. I thought they did everything that we could possibly do. We played a great team. I thought we played as well as we could play. Uh, Indiana's a great basketball team, and they won the game at the end, and I think that's the way it should be. They made a great play at the end of the game to win it. Coach, on that last shot by Keith Smart, did you realize that there was more time left on the clock than you felt should have been? It was one second when they gave the ball to you. Do you feel there should have been more time on the clock? Uh, it was close. It was a close call, but I'm not going to think about that. Congratulations on getting all the way to the finals game. Thank you very much. All right, Jim Nance, back to you. Thank you, James. And isn't it ironic that five years ago, the heroics here were performed by number 23, Michael Jordan, from the same side of the court as number 23, Keith Smart of Indiana tonight. And we'll continue from the Superdome in just a moment. As without question, another tournament classic as Steve Alford helps tear down the net here at the Superdome. The Chevy MVPs of this championship game, the freshman Derek Coleman with 19 rebounds for Syracuse, and Keith Smart with 21 points, including the game-winning basket for the Hoosiers. And so the year of the Hoosiers continues. From Brent Musburger, Billy Packer, James Brown, and all of the following supporting cast here at CBS Sports, I'm Jim Nance saying so long from the Superdome in New Orleans.
ball is kicked. There you are. You're running for your life. You've a shooting star and all the years. No one knows just how hard you worked. But now it shows. One shine 